This video shows how we installed a cellular router and antenna on our host Cascade camper. It's first Tuesday of the month day. <laughs> you think? <laughs> when we were planning to go full-time last year, we knew it would be a big benefit to have separate carriers. So we had switched Gary to AT&T and I kept my Verizon cellular plan. Uh, both of those plans had unlimited data and we could create hotspots on our phone. In addition to that, we had both a Verizon and an AT&T hotspot that would be connected to a portable MIMO antenna to help improve the signal. Our intention was to try that for several months to see whether our combination phone and hotspots would be sufficient for internet usage during our full-time travels. The MIMO antenna was a really good purchase. There were times where our cell phones could not get a signal, but we were able to get a minimal signal using the hotspot and MIMO antenna. In Michigan, AT&T worked much better than Verizon. In Illinois, it seems like Verizon works better, at least in the area that we're staying at. When we were in North Carolina, again, Verizon worked a little better, um, but it seems to change regularly. So bottom line, I think both, having both carrier options was very beneficial to us. We wanted to see whether the combination cell phone and hotspots were going to be sufficient for us since the next upgrade to that, which is a router and separate antenna, is quite a steep cost increase. During our six month of traveling, in general, the hotspots and our cell phones were sufficient. There were areas obviously in Michigan that we had struggled with because of the limited cell signal we were looking for an option that would give us a little bit more reliable signal uh, as we travel the United States. So we decided to upgrade to a router and antenna. Um, actually, I did uh, because of a lot of the video uploads that we do. If you're considering this jump, I'd strongly recommend looking at the Mobile Internet Resource Center online. They have a ton of information, both free and paid, that would help make that decision for you. Uh, but in reality, the combination of the hotspots and the MIMO antenna may be good for most folks. We purchased a bundle that included a dual router and antenna. We wanted the dual modems to help continue our uh, AT&T and Verizon usage. We chose a Husky antenna, mainly for its lower profile, but after reading and after purchasing the bundle, that may not have been the most ideal antenna for our dual modem. Do the research um, before you choose your final system. Don't just assume that this is the best system available. We're trying to determine where the best place is for the antenna. This Husky antenna is rather large. When we put in the solar panel and the box, originally we were thinking that we would be able to go through there, but these uh, cellular antennas, the amount of cables on there is significantly more than we were expecting. Uh, so plan B is in order. On the host campers, you do have a very small amount of space that is available to get into that upper cabinet with all the wiring. So that's what Gary has been looking at. That's too bad that you couldn't use the radio antenna hole. I don't know how I'm going to make that work. I got to fish out a bunch of stuff that's in there. And I don't know if I'm running underneath anything or through anything with that. Yeah. And this, this is a huge amount of cable that we're having to deal with. It is too close to the air conditioner and could cause interference. All right, so from that vent, the hole down there is a little less than five inches. So if I put roughly where you, where that wire would be coming out, it'd be right about there. So if I take this, 
So like that will be too far. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is offset that hole. And if I go from the motor, we're about 26. Okay. So while the outside edge of that, I should have said It'd that. still be in the 24. be 22. Okay. Yes. Do that. That is just rough. rough. This Piece hole is in. just to get this threaded piece in. And you know, dig it out in there. Right. Um, what I'm going to do, it'll probably be really close to this other hole. So what I'm going to do is fill this with some wool. That's where my hole is. So you cannot go any more forward than that. I'm not worrying about the panel. Okay, because you're not going There's that deep in. There's two layers of plywood. One layer is down here inside the coach, and one layer is here, and they got styrofoam stuffed in between in the in the metal bracing. Yep. So all I got to do is go through this top layer. Once again, I'm going to drill a hole in my camper. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> no better time than now. So I know for sure that there's no metal. So, I want fingers. Yeah. So that's the non-math method. Yep, that works. We will not have a radio antenna because we do need to stay 18 to 24 inches away from any radiating point. So we're, we're just nixing that. <laughs> We're done with you, man. Done. Here goes nothing. Of course, my battery dies. So what we're finding out, uh, we were drilling very close to the front of this box. We found a metal plate, not aluminum, that looks like it's specifically for mounting this power distribution area. That metal plate goes just past that clip in the mirror. I think we're going to end up having to just go through the metal plate because we really don't have any other options at this point. Which it kind of makes sense. You you want something flat to, to mount to, so in addition to the aluminum frame, they have metal brackets. All right, so I'm gonna go through there. Okay. Well, that makes me feel a little better. That is really thin. Well, bottom line, we don't have to worry about it being a structural member. Nope. So, now we're fine. I gotta clean up up here too before I drop that thing in there. Yep. Clean the surface area. Yep. I'm making progress. We have two holes. Oh, oh. Um. Well, I'm thinking this isn't gonna work right. Something looks missing. Hmm. I don't, I don't see what the problem is. So we have a lot of excess wire from all of the antennas, um, but it's all nicely coiled up there. It came in. We got everything through that hole. Very reasonable. Nicely tied down. We have the router behind the TV. Looks like we're in pretty good shape here. Now we just gotta put everything back together one side if we wanted to get ethernet connections we could the side that is easier to get to um, has where has the locations of the sim cards
Beautiful routing job. As always, gear. It's pretty. We've been using this system for over a month now, and we're getting consistently five to six dB higher than our cell phones. The dB level is not really the most ideal way to tell whether a signal is better or not, but that's the that's the data point we have. We also are not seeing as much buffering on videos as we were before, at least in the area that we are in Illinois. So bottom line, I think I've been very happy with the system so far, even with the non-ideal antenna, uh, but I think it, it's gonna work well for us in the future. Let us know if you have any questions about our system or installation, um, put that down in the comments and have a great day.